Okay, so let's take a look at how to use the new Google Forms to create a reading log for students. In Google, go ahead and search for Google Forms, which is part of the Google Apps for Education, which is nice because every teacher and student in the district already has an account in their school account. So when you get to this main Google Forms page, tap on Go to Google Forms, and you may be prompted to log in at this point if you're not already logged in. If you do have to log in, you use your work email, your school email, and your school password. And that will take you to this page. This is where you would see any past forms that you have created. It would be empty if you've never done this before. To create a new form, tap on the red plus button, and this brings you into the form editor. Now, it's very simple to create a new form. We start at the top and work our way down. I'm going to begin with a title. So, reading log Homics Middle School. And you can add a description. Please record your reading activity for the year using the form below. You should submit a form every time you complete a book. Of course, you can make those des that description whatever you like. This is just an example. Now the first question we want to include is certainly some identifying information. So I'm going to do first name, and that should not be a multiple choice, that should be a short answer question, and it should be required. We want all students to have to answer that. And then I want to do another question, so I hit the plus button for add question, and I'm going to do last name, and also that would be a short answer, and that should be required. And so maybe I want to know some more information like their class period. So I'm going to add a question, and we can do class period. And this should be a multiple choice. You can put your four periods in here. Period 1, period 2, period 3, and so forth. Okay, and that should be required as well. And then we can get to some information about the book itself. Uh, of course, we need to know the title of the book. So I'm going to add a short answer question, and we'll call it book title. Okay, that should be a required question. And we also want to know author. So I will do another short answer question and do author and make it required. And then I want to do a genre. So for genre, we could leave it short answer. I'm sorry, yeah, we could leave it short answer, but this might be a good place to do a checkbox or a drop down list uh, or even a multiple choice. I'm going to do a drop down just for something different. So maybe we'll do romance, mystery, horror, um, drama. Nonfiction, biography, historical fiction, etc. You got the idea. And I will make that a retire, uh, required question. Um, if you wanted them to be able to select more than one genre for a particular book, you wouldn't use the drop down. You'd probably do check boxes, and then they could check as many as apply. So either one, whichever works better for you. Uh, and then we like to have a rating for the book, so the kids get to say how much they liked it. So I'm going to add a new question, and for this, we're going to use the linear scale, which is a very nice option here. So we can say rate you how much you liked this book. And we can say a scale from 1 to 5, 1 being I hated it, and five being this is the best book ever. And of course you can change the wording to whatever you like. You can also, if you want to give more options, you can make it a scale um, from five actually up to as high as ten, I believe, by changing the numbers here. Okay, and I'm going to make that a required question. Uh, and then we want to know the date that the book was completed. So I added another question, and I'm going to say date book completed, and from the drop-down I'm actually going to select date, and we have a date selector here which is very nice, and we'll make that a required question. And then finally we want the total number of pages read, so 
total number pages read. And this should probably be a short answer question, also required. And that's it. In two minutes, I've created a reading log form. Uh, on the top of the page, you can control the color scheme of the form using the palette icon. You can make it any number of different colors you like. And you can also add a custom image to the top if you're interested. Uh, we need to just check with some settings here, though. So I'm going to go into the gear icon. And we have some options here. Now, who can respond to this form? Well, right now it's set so that only people with an mamkschools.org email can respond to this, which is fine. The only downside is that students would need to make sure they're logged in to their school account when they try and respond. It's entirely up to you whether you want that to be the case. Uh, I generally think it's fine to open this up to anyone in the world. It makes things a little bit easier. Um, you do lose the option to only give them one response, meaning each student can only respond one time. But in this case, students need to be able to respond many times every time they finish a book. So that's not really relevant here. So I like to make it anyone can respond. Uh, for the confirmation page, when they've completed their form, you can have a custom message. Great job. Now get started on a new book, or whatever you'd like to say. And it's good to leave the link to submit another response. Maybe they finish two books at the same time and they need to do two uh, form submissions right away. Um, we can allow them to edit their response, though I like to leave that off. It just tends to complicate things. Um, if you're interested, you can even give them a link to see a summary of other student responses that might give them ideas for other books they want to read. Uh, you can include a progress bar so they can see how far along in the form they are. And if you want to, you could shuffle the order of the questions, though that's not really relevant for this application. So I'm going to hit save. The last thing I want to do is I just want to come over here to the three dots and check some more advanced features. So I'm actually going to come down to add collaborators. And if you want to share this form with other teachers, you can invite them with their email address right here. Um, by default, it's, it's private. Only you can, can edit this. Um, I also like to change that and make it public on the web, or at least anyone with a link. That way you're, you're opening it up so other people can use it. Um, if it's really the way you like it and you don't want anyone to edit it, you can change this um, so that only people with the link can have control over it. But I generally like to open it up to the web and leave it like that. I think that's the easiest way. So I can hit save. Okay. Editors will be able to view responses. That's fine. Okay. And we are good to go. Okay. So I'm going to hit the done button and I am all set here. Now, in terms of sharing this, you simply tap on the send button and we want anyone to respond. Um, we don't want to check this off. We want them to be able to respond as many times as they like. The best way to share this is actually with the link. So if I tap on the link icon, I have this link right here, which I can copy and paste into Google Classroom or Shobi or paste onto a website or eChalk or wherever I like. Uh, you even have an option to use a short URL, which will just take the web address and shorten it, make it easier to share. Or if you have a blog, you can actually embed this form right in the blog or in the website so that it's always there waiting for students. Probably the best thing to do is to share it as a link. So you can copy that link and then paste it wherever you'd like the students to have access to it. Now, Let's see what this would look like from the student perspective. So I'm going to go to the live form. This is what the form looks like, and I'm going to fill it out. Okay, first name and last name. Okay, all right, let's say I read An Inconvenient Truth by Al Gore, which is a, mm, well, we'll call it a nonfiction biography. I thought it was pretty good. I completed it on December 10th, 2015, and I read 346 pages, and I can hit Submit. And great job, now get started on a new book. Now, I have the option here to see previous responses, um, which I could do, and it will show me all the different submission responses. But as a teacher, you need to be able to get to the form to see what students have turned in. So let me show you how I would do that. 
um, I'm actually going to go back to the Google Forms main page here and I see here's my form right here, reading log, and I can tap on this and it brings me back into the form editor. Now you'll notice on the top I have this tab here for responses which I can click on and I can quickly see all the responses. Now they give it to you in a question by question format here where I can see all the responses to the first name question and the last name and the period title etc. Which is nice if you don't have a lot of data. But if you have a lot of data you're dealing with it's much easier to view this data within kind of a spreadsheet view. And that's easy to do by tapping on this green icon right here to create a spreadsheet. We want to create a new spreadsheet and they're going to name it. This is going to be the name of it. And I'm going to hit create. And so the spreadsheet has been created and linked to this form. And so now to view it all I got to do is tap on that icon again and it takes me out to a Google Sheet that shows me all of the entries. And what's very nice about this is each column can be sorted according to alphabetical order or numeric order. So you can view all of the reading for one individual student. You can also search within this spreadsheet and you can export it in a variety of formats. And it will keep an ongoing log for all of the reading that your students do throughout the year. Hope that was helpful. Let me know if you need any assistance getting this started. Thanks.